Excellent. Um, I'm going to talk about the world we live in today. The world we live in today has fundamentally changed. This change happened about a decade and a half ago. It happened silently. It happened without fanfare. But it has fundamentally changed how we interact with our world today. And that's going to be my topic for the day. My name is George Thomas. I'm on my third career. As a young man, I wanted to build things. So I went into the career of building things. I took a bachelor's degree in civil engineering. I've got a master's degree in structural engineering from Georgia Tech. I went into the field of building the physical. I did this for a few years. Then I fell into my second career, which was technology and business and application of technology to business. I spent a decade working in educational systems, putting in systems for schools, for teachers, to teach kids better in the state of Georgia, in the US, in Alabama, in New York. Then I spent time in utilities, water, electricity, sewer systems, riding garbage trucks all, across, all up and down the East Coast. Then I spent time in healthcare and governments across the world, local, municipal, state, provincial, central governments, military, the US DOD. And all of what I was doing in that second decade or my second career was understanding the effect of technology and applications of it in real life world. Which leads me to the career that I have today. It's called Smarter Planet. About six years ago, I got dragged into an IBM initiative called Smarter Planet. And Smarter Planet, essentially, the core idea is that we now are in a space where we do not have to guess about what is happening. We actually have the data to extract insight about what is happening today. And why do we have this data? It's because the way the world is working fundamentally changed about three, four decades ago, but the change became profound about a decade and a half ago. And the change is based on technology-related things. Number one was censoring instrumentation, things that are measuring things that you could not measure before or think about measuring before. The second thing is the, our ability to collect and store and harness this, the data. And the third thing is our capability, computing power, to make sense of this data. The vast majority of data we collect today does not sit in tables, in Excel spreadsheets, and databases. It's what we call unstructured data. It's things that people are putting out there, the millions of photographs that have to be taken out today, the hashtags, the videos that's happening today. That is what the raw form of data is. And this fundamentally creates a new economy. And data is the new natural resource for the world we live in today. So think about that for a moment. So you have a world, and this change happened, This Instrumentation, interconnection, and intelligence happened about 15 years ago. And now, we are realizing the profoundness of this change. What we can do, what we can measure, what we don't have to guess. And combined with this data, there's multiple other facets of technology that's coming to it. Things like cognitive computing, AI like Watson from IBM. Things like analyzing, robotics. You saw the drones. These things are fundamentally changing. Nanotechnology, biotechnology are all adding to how we interact and intersect with the world. And as this world fundamentally changes around us, it's affecting every industry that humans touch, every facet of life that we touch. Think about how you shop today versus how you would shop to 20 years ago. For those of you who did shop 20 years ago, the vast majority in this room are probably don't remember that. But the way you shop today is fundamentally different. The way you bank today is fundamentally different than how we used to bank. And this has happened by how we intersect and interact with the world. And what is this creating? This is creating opportunities for us. It's creating brand new industries. It's creating a way of thinking that did not exist before. 
And why is this happening? It's two trends. Trend number one that I talked about just now was technology related, which the outcome being data, and then data becoming knowledge, and knowledge becoming intelligence, and intelligence becoming wisdom. So now we have the capability to better and in more fine-tuned sense answer questions that we've always had. Simple questions. Now this will seem boring to you today, but the fact that you can get up in the morning, look up at your GPS and see what the traffic is like, did not exist a decade ago. The fact that you can do it from your phone. So this basic kind of continuum. But wouldn't it be better if you could do that and you look it up and it tells you what the traffic is going to be 60 minutes from now, when you have to go? Then wouldn't it be better if you could tap into all of the other systems that you would do and give you the option, take the transit today, don't take a car because X, Y, Z reasons. And then wouldn't it be better if somebody could look at that at a macro level and redirect traffic so you would never have to have that problem in 60 minutes that you have today. This is the future of how we are doing. We are getting better and better answers for the questions we've had by tapping into further and further reaches of data sources. But the second profound thing that's happening around intelligence, this concept of intelligence, is asking better questions. We've always just asked the questions that we've known how to ask because that's what we've always done. But now, because we have access to the actual detailed data from pretty much anything you can measure, you can ask better questions. So now there are whole sciences opening up for people going around asking better questions. The second trend, cities. Urbanization is a fact of life. We've been living in cities since Mesopotamia, 5,000 plus years ago. And this trend of moving to urban regions for better prospects, better jobs, better health, better security, continues. We crossed the 50% mark, I think, in 2008. 50% of humanity lives in an urban zone now. By 2050, they predict that's going to be 70%. Now, whether cities will exist two decades, two, 200 years from now, who knows? But for the immediate future, this is where we are. This is where everybody comes to. Everybody wants to be in a Hong Kong because it affords better opportunity. And this is the reality. So the trend of what cities have caused, this rapid urbanization, what this has caused is for the problems that existed in cities to become really acute. And the solutions to those problems needing to be much better thought out. Now, if you look at a smart city, what is smarter? We get lots and lots and lots of ideas. Everything from an application to, you know, to get a taxi, to running security nationally. Everybody calls all of this smarter. So we try to put some kind of construct around what smarter meant. So in a smarter city, or a place that you live, or an urban region, you can look at it from three different lenses. And each of these lenses have completely different perspectives on what it means to be smarter. A resident or a citizen only cares about those things. This has not changed in 5,000 years. This is what they've always cared about. The governments care about those things because they have to manage to it. Except now the expectations of a resident to the government is the expectation you would have from your telephone company or from your internet search company. The same expectation from an organization that does not have the manpower, the knowledge of the technology to provide that back to you. And then, of course, there's this huge ecosystem of opportunity that's created, which is the one thing I would challenge all of you in this room with. The amount of opportunity in the ecosystem for what we call smarter cities, a smarter planet, is untapped, unknowable. Entire industries are waiting to be discovered by finding these intersections. So if you look at it from a lens perspective, this is what you get. If you look at it from the perspective of portfolio, this is what you get. Everything that's got to do with the physical infrastructure, everything that's got to do with governance, and everything that's got to do with the people living in a city. Around the world, there are thousands of projects in each of these silos that have happened. Real projects that are functioning, that are happening. Very concrete examples, including here in Hong Kong. Real, real results are being achieved. Without capital investment, without simple things, real change is happening in people's lives. And I'm not talking changes at the app level. I'm taking fundamental changes in how the digital layer is being laid out, how the sensors are being laid out, the data that's being extracted from it, what's being done with it. 
Now, of course, this level of knowledge has good and bad. It can be misused, it can be used for good. One has to work within the constraints of what the world is becoming to change what we need. This is a fantastic example. The Netherlands has been living with a water problem for 700 years. This year, they have integrated every water board, every local provincial, every this thing into one integrated system to have the most comprehensive water management capability ever seen before. And they have to. They're mostly under sea level. And the reason I put this up is water is just one of the silos of what we make smarter cities. But water affects everything else. And this is where really the magic is yet to happen. The interconnection between systems. We've been doing water systems for a long time. We know how they work. We know how to optimize it. But now, if you could understand the implications of one system versus something else, this is where new industries will spawn. This is where the magic will happen. This is where the infrastructure needs to happen. This is where the applications will come from. All the applications need things, and all the applications have potential use cases, potential business opportunities, potential human life quality improvement perspective. One city that took advantage of all of this and put it together was Rio. To take advantage of the Olympics and the World Cup coming, they actually integrated multiple systems to create a central operations command and control center to improve quality of life in their city. Of course, all of this said, we've talked about the framework of what makes a smarter city. And this is truly important because till you understand the framework, you don't know what the piece parts are. And once you understand the framework, you know where the piece parts are, you know where the opportunities are. Then one can apply oneself to try to figure out what the other possible pieces need to be. But to do this, you need to engage people. So this is one of the websites that we've created called People for Smarter Cities to actually engage citizens to interact with their governments, to try to figure out what ideas might work and see where the funding sources might come from. At the end of the day, there is a huge pent-up demand for changing the world we live in. The future is going to be knowledge workers, not manufacturing, not agriculture, even though that will still exist. And knowledge workers have much higher expectations. I have a four-year-old daughter. In 2050, she'll be 40. Mm -hmm. Two weeks ago today, we had a baby boy. I have a son. He's going to be 36. Mm -hmm. The world they grew up in is going to be fundamentally and radically mm -hmm. different than the one we live in today. How we teach them, what we teach them, we don't know yet. We need to figure it out. Do our education systems work? How do they acquire information? What careers will they have? Do the jobs that they will do? Do those descriptions even exist today? We don't know. How do we come full circle in figuring out this economy with this rapid fundamental change? That is the key for the next 20, 30, 40 years. This is the fundamental key that's going to change our world. So let me kind of sort of conclude with this. The world we live in has fundamentally changed. None of us realized it when it happened. Now the depth and the profoundity of it is becoming clearer and clearer and clearer. But within this change, there is tremendous opportunity for people to come up with brilliant, great ideas, brilliant, great businesses, brilliant, great ability to help your fellow man. Thank you. Mm -hmm.